so long. The past few days, it's been raining so heavily. Okay. My umbrella got inverted. Oh my gosh, Mr. Tim, for someone of your physique so muscular, I can't believe that you can't withstand the wind. Sadly, I can't. Anyway, looking at that inverted umbrella, right, it kind of reminds me of what we have studied last week known as an SN2 mechanism. Mr. Tim, can you help me share, share with me what's going on last week? Yeah, come guys, let's go to the notes, yeah? So, the S in SN2, SN2 stands for substitution, and the N stands for nucleophilic. Now, the 2 does not stand for a two-step reaction. Mm -hmm. It stands for a one-step reaction with two molecules involved in that particular one step. Now, let's, let's bring you through. Again, if the carbon, if the electrophilic carbon in the Rx, it is not spherically hindered, then the nucleophile can easily do a backside attack and attack that carbon and break that CX bond, forming this thing what we call a pentavalent transition state, where the CX bond then breaks later to release off your X minus, right? Now, so this is what we call an inversion of configuration, guys. If you look at your reactant, can you see how the configuration was at the beginning like this? And at the end, in the product, it looks like this, okay? So this is where our umbrella has just inverted, all right? Now, Mr. Long, what happens if the carbon is sterically hindered, like boarding a train at 5 p.m. peak period? So uh, definitely it's going to be very crowded, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised, Mr. Tim. I, I thought that you always grab... I can't believe that you actually know the situations inside the public transport. <laughs> but anyway, coming back to your SN1 mechanism, uh, as what Mr. Tim suggested, the one over here mm -hmm. does not really mean that it's a one-step mechanism. In fact, it is a two-step mechanism, but the one actually represents just having one molecule in the slow step. So our halogen and alkane, in the presence of heat, is going to undergo a hectorolytic breaking. The CX bond is going to break automatically to release me a carbocation. Now this carbocation is going to involve itself in step two, where it's going to get attacked by a nucleophile to give me the product that I want. All right? Now, Mr. Tim, now uh, if you are a halogen and alkane, okay. can you tell me uh, which mechanism would you choose to undergo? Oh, that's quite tough. So it really depends on whether your halogen and alkane is sterically hindered or it is not. Mm -hmm. Now, if the carbon in the halogen and alkane it is not sterically hindered, mm -hmm. so we have only one alcohol group, so usually primary R axis, mm -hmm. then it is very easy for the nucleophile to come in and attack that carbon there. Mm. And Yes, but if the carbon is sterically hindered and if you have big fat alkyl groups blocking that carbon, then it's very difficult for the nucleophile to come in now and attack. So this is exactly when no more backside attack happens, that CX bond now breaks heterolytically, right, to give you that carbocat ion, which is stabilized by your electron donating alkyl groups, dispersing that positive charge and stabilizing your carbocat ion. Okay. Right. So let me summarize this for you. Yep. So in general, if you have a primary halogen alkane, okay. you rather undergo SN2. Right. And if you have a tertiary halogen alkane, you rather undergo SN1. So a big number yep. becomes small, a small number becomes big, right? Um, let's say what happens um, if you have a secondary halogen alkane. Mr. Tim, what will happen? Damn, well, if it's a secondary halogen alkane, then you really have to think. Because it could be SN1, mm -hmm. it could be SN2, or it could be a combination of both, we're not too sure. Right. So to really know, we need to do an experiment and mm -hmm. we have to look at the product mixture. Okay. Now, if the product mixture is racemic, then we know it's SN1. Mm -hmm. Now, the product mixture has an inversion of configuration though, mm -hmm. then we know it's SN2, okay? Now, what exactly does a racemic mixture mean? Mm -hmm. It is this. Guys, I want you guys to focus on the carbon in the tertiary carbocat ion here. Circle it up for me. Mm -hmm. Notice with me that the carbon, Mr. Long, has three bond pairs, zero lone pairs. Mm -hmm. What shape is this? It will be trigonal planar, which is flat. Okay, it's completely mm -hmm. flat. Now, which means a nuclear file can attack from the top mm -hmm. or from the bottom. Now, there's mm -hmm. an equal percent, equal chance of doing it, mm -hmm. which means if the product is chiral, 50% mm -hmm. of the product will rotate plane polarized light clockwise, okay? And the other 50% will rotate plane polarized light counterclockwise. Now, in other words, the product mixture has zero optical activity. And now, this is what we call a racemic mixture. And Mr. Long, can you bring me through the inversion of configuration one? So, this is very yeah. similar to your inverted umbrella, right? So, mm -hmm. once again, we have to pay attention to the reactants being a chiral carbon. Okay. So, if it's chiral, it can rotate light. Let's say it rotates clockwise, right? So, I'll put this as a plus over here. Now, the moment it undergoes SN2, we say that the arrow, or rather, sorry, the umbrella is going to now face the other side. So, that is going to be facing in the, uh, we'll be rotating in the counterclockwise direction. I'll put this as a minus. So, there is this opposite direction going on over here. Uh, the very technical term that we use is called an inversion of stereochemical configuration. 
right? Now, let me bring you through the last difference between okay. SN1 and SN2, mm -hmm. uh, which is to deal with the thing called a rate equation. Now, I'm asking you to go back to kinetics, right? To recall that in order to deduce a rate equation, we always look at the stoichiometry of the reactants in the slow step. So in the context of uh, SN1, the slow step only uses one reactant. So what do you think the overall order of the reaction will be? One molecule in the slow step, mm -hmm. one, overall order one? That's right, yeah. so it corresponds to SN1, and more importantly, the rate equation, overall order is one as well. Ah. Now, how about SN2? You say that there's going to be two molecules in the slow step. Mm -hmm. So what will the overall order be? Two. Two, and that corresponds to the two over here. Yep. And in terms of the rate equation, overall order is two, where each of the reactants, its order is going to be one. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. now let me link this back into your energy profile diagram at the bottom. Uh, important aspect is the fact that the number of hums that you see in the energy profile diagram will correspond to the number of steps. So Mr. Tim, for SN1, you see two hums because you have two steps. Two steps. Yeah. So there's going to be two activation energies. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tim, why is the first activation energy higher? Because it's slow. If the higher activation energy, it takes a bit slower, slow mm -hmm. step. Uh, that's why you get a higher activation energy, yeah. right? Uh, but for the second one, there's only just one step reaction. So you expect to only see a one activation energy.